Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, endocytosis, where we're specifically focusing in on uh, adapter protein complexes. So we've seen now that we target adapter protein complexes to the plasma membrane by allowing them to interact with this synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein, specifically the C2B domain of the uh, synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein. And that for that interaction to occur, you for some reason need PIP2 in the membrane, in the cell membrane. Okay. Right. Now, what will happen? is when you have a target protein also in this plasma membrane, so let's bring this up here. Okay, so here's our target protein in turquoise here, and this will have some sort of cytoplasmic endocytic motif um, visible, basically. So here, let's say this is the endocytic motif. Okay, so either the asparagine anything anything tyrosine or the tyrosine anything anything hydrophobic residue, one of those two um, uh, endocytic motifs will be visible on the cytoplasmic domain of this target protein. And now what will happen is you've already got your core, um, your sorry, your adapter protein complex two at the plasma membrane bound to the synaptotagmin, what it will now do is it will also bind to the endocytic motif of um, this uh, target protein here. And then what will happen is that these appendages here of the, of the um, adapter protein complex will then recruit other proteins which are involved in the endocytosis process and you will start to endocytose that target protein. Okay, so now what I want to discuss is a little bit of experimental evidence for this um, adapter protein complex interacting with the synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein. Okay, right. So, uh, in order to do this, what you're going to do basically is you want to show that the adapter protein 2 complex interacts with synaptotagmin 1 slash 2. Now, the way you're going to do this is you're going to take synaptic vesicles. So let's say this is a synaptic vesicle. Now we know that uh, sorry, synaptic vesicles are stuffed full of synaptotagmin. Okay, so here is our synaptotagmin. So what we're going to see is do these synaptic vesicles bind to the adapter protein uh, complex 2 basically? Okay, and the way we're going to do this is for an assay technique that is used a lot. So we're going to discuss it in some detail so that um, when you next hear it, you'll know what you're talking about. Okay, right. So, in order to understand this assay, we need to know something about glutathione. Okay, right. So let me tell you what the molecule gluto glutathione is. So glutathione is basically a molecule that is made up of free amino acids. So let me show you these amino acids now. So what you have is you have your carboxylic terminus of this molecule over here. Okay, then the first amino acid you have here, let me get that. Oh no, that's not a hair, it's just something showing up from the, on the other side. Okay, the first amino acid you have is a glycine amino acid. So this is glycine here. And it is then linked by an amide bond to another amino acid. So here comes the next amino acid. So this, so far, this is a glycine amino acid here. Glycine is the simplest amino acid. Its R group is merely a hydrogen, basically. So this in orange here, this is the amino acid glycine. Okay. Then the next amino acid along, here's the carboxylic acid uh, domain of the, well, the carboxylic acid group of the next amino acid, which is linked by a peptide link to the amino group of this glycine. Okay, and then you have the alpha carbon here with a hydrogen coming off it, and then the R group is a methylene group, like so, with a sulfur and a hydrogen like that. Now that is the R group of cysteine. Okay, so this is the cysteine amino acid. Okay, so let me circle this one as well. We'll do this in blue. Okay, so in blue here, this is the amino acid cysteine. Okay, so glutathione 
is called, the, it has this phyome bit in the name because of this phyol group on the cysteine. So this is very important. This is the most important part of the glutathione molecule, this phyol group here, which is just this sulfur bound to a hydrogen here. So this is the amino acid cysteine. Okay, and then finally, it's linked to the final amino acid, but it's not linked in the normal way. It's linked to a carboxylic acid group, but this is not the normal carboxylic acid group of the amino acid that you'd be bound to. Instead, this is a carboxylic acid group that is in the R group of the amino acid. So, let me show you now. This final amino acid is the amino acid glutamate. And glutamate's R group is basically a free-membered carboxylic acid. So, this is the R group of glutamate. And then finally, over here, we'll have the normal amino acid structure of glutamate. So, we'll have the amino group up here. And then the carboxylic acid group that's normal, that all the amino acids have, is down here. This is the one that should have been bound here, basically. If we were forming a normal uh, tripeptide, this is the one that would be linked here. It's not. This, uh, this carboxylic acid group here is the carboxylic acid group that's in the R group of the glutamate molecule. So this final amino acid that's bound here, which will circle in turquoise, this is the amino acid glutamate. Okay, so glutamate. So this is why it's called glutathione. The gluta comes from the glutamate. Uh, the thione comes from the fact that you have this thiol group of cysteine down here. Okay, now why is this molecule so important? Well, basically, in the liver, there is an enzyme. Okay, so let's show this enzyme. So there is an enzyme that can add this glutathione molecule. And by the way, glutathione is often abbreviated to GSH. And you might be trying to think, what? Where have they got the S from? There's no S in this name. Well, basically, they take the G from gluta, and then they take this SH, because that's what the thiol group is. It's SH, the sulfur bound to the hydrogen. So that's where they get that from. SH is the thiol group. So gluta with a thiol group, glutathione. So it's often abbreviated to GSH. Okay, now this enzyme here, this is known as glutathione, glutathione S transferase, okay? S transferase. Okay, now what does this enzyme do? Well, basically, it's capable of sticking glutathione molecules on other proteins. In fact, not just proteins, other molecules, full stop. Any old molecule, lots of drug molecules, basically. When we give drugs to people, they often end up in the liver, and they often end up getting these glutathione molecules stuck onto them, and it inactivates them, basically. And this is why the liver's doing it. It's to inactivate dangerous molecules by sticking this massive, great uh, free amino acid structure onto them. So, glutathione S transferase is often abbreviated to G. ST for short, and that one does come from its initials. So glutathione S transferase. Now, this enzyme is heavily expressed in liver tissues, hepatocytes, and as I say, they are adding these glutathione molecules onto other molecules, such as proteins, such as uh, drug molecules, etc. And the way that you add them on is through this thiol group. This is the most reactive group that's anywhere here. So basically, what you can do is you can take that hydrogen off and you can stick this sulfur atom onto all sorts of different chemical groups. Okay, so you can conjugate this glutathione molecule onto uh, other proteins. And when you do that, it's known as glutathione conjugation. So glutathione conjugation is what this glutathione S transferase is catalyzing. It's catalyzing this conjugation reaction, okay, which often leads to the inactivation of molecules. Now, the important thing for the basis of this assay is that when the glutathione S transferase wants to add a glutathione molecule onto a protein, what it firstly does is forms, well, what it does first is it forms an intermediate. 
basically it binds to the glutathione first. So here is the glutathione bound to the glutathione S transferase, which is this GST here, glutathione S transferase. So it takes this hydrogen off this sulfur atom and binds the sulfur atom to some functional group on the enzyme. And that forms this enzyme intermediate, basically. And what it will then do is it will transfer this glutathione group onto the chemical group of some other molecule. But the important thing for our assay is that if the other molecule is not present, the glutathione S transferase will just remain linked to the glutathione. Okay, so we're going to use this interaction, basically, uh, to be able to somehow assay whether the uh, adapter protein complex 2 binds to the synaptotagmin protein, and we'll find out how in the next video.